in the words of michael de bakery true freedom requires the rule of law and justice and a judicial system in which the rights of some are not secured by the denial of rights to others good afternoon to everyone i yukti bharatwaj host for the day center for legal studies nilatan international business school welcomes everyone to this jurist day today we going to have a knowledgeable session on the topic of evolution of law Gita Dhan International Business School (GIBS) is affiliated to Guru Gobind Singh Indrapastha University, Delhi, and is approved by All India Council for Technical Education (Ministry of HR), Government of India for Technical Programs, and Bar Council of India for Law Programs. The institute is conducting postgraduate programs like MBA, MBA International Business, and undergraduate courses like BBA, BA LLB. and bdlb gives have been ranked two amongst the top b schools of north delhi in the times b school survey for 2018 2019 and now 2021 the evolution of law begins before history was recorded with laws built up one by one as disputes were settled for thousands of years customary and private legal systems alone ordered human activities the power of customary law For thousands of years, customary and private legal systems alone ordered human activities. The power of customary law is found in the fact that it is reflected in the conduct of people towards one another. The further a society moves away from customary and private law system, the greater the need for laws coercively enforced by the state. The law is essentially discovered, not made. Law is a systematic discovery process involving the historical experiences. of successive generations law reflects and embodies the experience of all men who have ever lived with this we start our session with our honorable professor m abzalwani he is a nationally prominent educator and researcher in law he is a former member of the law commission of india dean university of school of law and legal studies at campus law faculty of the guru gobind singh indrapastha university delhi He has also served as member and chair of various university and legal aid committees in Delhi. A multifaceted scholar and administrator, Professor Abzalwani is a visionary and leader in India's legal fraternity in general and law teachers community in particular. A gold medalist in his master's degree in law, a PhD in comparative jurisprudence and a long-term senior researcher at the Indian Law Institute New Delhi and inspiring academic leader. Professor M Abzalwani has endured 29 years of his career doing what he finds best for the nation and whole humanity and does at the best that is inspiring student professionals institutional heads social activists and policy makers to raise their excellence to the next and better level Professor Abzalwani has contributed over 75 research papers and about a dozen of books to the field of law covering topical issues of human right constitutionalism gender justice child rights and worker rights professor wani joined the indian law institute in january 2000 played a key role in introducing post graduate advanced diploma programs in new emerging areas of study that is cyber law intellectual property law corporate governance management law and human rights law with this we request our guest to start with the session okay i would say maybe in absentia uh, cherry anirudh jindal ji and uh, then we have with us uh, dr uh, yadav ji and uh, all other faculty members and dear students uh, today we are trying to get into an area uh, where i shall say that uh, if uh, anybody knows uh all the provisions of law as written anywhere but does not know that how uh, the humanity has come to this stage of having that set of laws uh he only knows uh, only one or two percent uh, of, of of the of the law or he is yet to uh, have a genuine you know tracking in the province of law uh because unless uh, we know how things have come into existence 
uh, and uh, then definitely you know uh, we we are missing it and and uh, why i say this i am appreciating uh, that this uh, geeta ratan uh, in a, a school of law it's having a brilliant faculty uh, and they have the ideas uh, so their brain child that we should speak on evolution of law uh, that's very important Uh, so if uh, any uh, any of the scholars uh, is very much focused on 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 law evolution of law uh, then definitely it shows uh, that they are truly concerned about understanding law studying law and knowing its uh, making up and breaking up its birth and death and like that so having said that uh, i would say Uh, that uh, uh, we uh, have generally uh, two sets of laws uh, which we commonly find uh, anywhere one is that we generally find as it is written in the books uh, and uh, and uh, in today we have more of it in books and the second is uh, what's uh, working in the form of uh, uh you know customs traditions usages uh, and those all those kinds of norms uh they have been in practice for long uh and 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 these two are still prevalent and and when uh, we had a glorious constitution in india then wherever it was necessary maybe in article 13 when it was necessary to mention Uh, what law is uh, for certain purposes then definitely we did not miss to mention these both uh, uh, you know um, spheres of law uh, and and scrutiny by the judiciary about them so that shows the importance and 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 it's important also for understanding the evolution of law as such uh, the the journey of law has begun with uh with with the uh, birth of a uh, human being with his advancement in different stages of uh, life and and like that uh, so uh, as such the law uh, has been there uh, if uh, if if we find every day sun is rising in the east uh, it's like a law well determined and uh, we find uh, even if there are lot many stars in the sky but still they don't collide you know as we find them from the ground probably they are following certain orbits and they are you know determined courses for them uh, and then we have not that much uh, number of human beings on this planet earth still we find so many collisions and conflicts and contradictions and then scuffles and fights and you know we have uh, very much developed a judicial system for uh, understand for interpreting for enforcing uh, so that's uh, how we can see that uh, how these things exist uh, in the world and and in the universe so so law would be what is a determined norm i'm not going to ordinarily uh, those uh, definitions given by theorists of different perceptions in jurisprudence but uh, i would say it's uh, you know a determinate course law is a determinate course at a particular uh, period of time uh, and uh, it it may be it's not necessarily it's written in the book that's what i'm trying to say uh, and at the same time a lot of it is now codified uh, we we see and therefore the voyage of humanity has been uh from all those unwritten norms rules procedures usages up to this day that today we find uh prominently laws are written and formulated every day and then people are also now very much in this kind of practice that if you tell anybody why did you do this thing he will say is it prohibited by any law and by that he will tell you show me the law he intends to see the law is written in the book that's what i'm uh, trying to give the context that we have to be clear about it 
and when we see this kind of uh, this uh, you know course of law uh, you know, from uh, uh, the days which are now uh, unknown to us and then up to this day uh, this we may say it is it's the evolution of the law it's the development of the law and uh, then it becomes very important to see the factors uh, which make it evolve and then at the same time we have to see uh, that it it grows in the society uh, and 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 that's how we find it uh, that in the society uh, things grow uh, things come up uh, and then in the same way uh, we are keeping on proceeding with the things as such uh, so it's quite genuine uh, that we must understand uh, this uh, the course of law and and that's uh, that's how you know uh, uh, how we can uh, do the things. So coming to that, I, I, I always say that see the human being has traveled from cave to cosmos. And when he was in the cave, uh, he was following uh, anything, uh, whatever was around. Uh, maybe it was the scorching sunlight, whether it was the, uh, you know, too much of the cold, and whether it was the threat of the beast, uh, and that, those were the only challenges uh, to the person and uh, his only response to it was to get into the cave and protect himself from the beast, from the scorching sunlight and from severe cold. Uh, but then when they started settling uh, and, and then we had primitive society, uh, with that the laws started coming. Up. And, uh, and from time to time we found the laws which came into existence, uh, they transformed and kept on transforming through different ages. Uh, and, and, and that's how uh, we found that laws uh, continue to transform up to this state. And uh, we can safely say that the nature of the law, the, you know, uh, this uh, uh, following of the law, and then uh, its uh, comprehensiveness uh, and, and then uh, its complexity, that has also varied with the society. As the society kept on changing, uh, then laws also kept on changing. Uh, and we found that human being, uh, he uh, had a, a transformation in their settlements right from the days when they started establishing, settling themselves by uh, the side of a river, a stream, uh, and then having some agricultural products and then some fruits and then having some habitats and then starting the formal relations. Uh, definitely uh, that needed the norms that needed uh, some kinds of regulations uh, which they were uh, managing themselves at that primitive stage. Here I may point one thing that we have to identify that human being is carrying always some sense of fairness, uh, some sense uh, which you may today say it's uh, like, yeah, you know, something pleases a human being and something uh, uh, creates a repulsion. Uh, so uh, uh, that, that has been there and probably that wherever there has been found some solace, some pleasure, by any practice, uh, that was considered the law. That was considered the norm to be followed. And wherever that natural sense found some repulsion about some act, uh, which uh, I would say uh, would uh, create some kind of pain, displeasure, uh, or uh, not worth approval, uh, then uh, that, that uh, there was the other norm. Uh, the, the contrast of it would be the law. Uh, so this uh, this is how in the absence of formal uh, legislatures, in the absence of formal discussion, in the absence of formal lawmaking, we have found that humanity has survived. Uh, humanity has come uh, from one stage to another stage. Uh, as, as originally we could not have thought of any enforcement agency, any police agency, any other society was itself re regulating itself and they were developing the norms for their convenience and that quantum of convenience would give a norm or a usage 
the character of law because everybody would expect it to be so. So uh, uh, I, I would uh, like to say, say that the students must understand it, though it looks very simple and primitive. Uh, but this is a big foundation which, which can, you know, always be necessary for understanding the law. Uh, because uh, sometimes I say most primitive is most modern. Uh, because, you know, uh, uh, when you go in front of a mirror, it, it is true and it gives you clarity. It may not be seen, it may not be having a mind, but it reflects. In the same way, the human being then and in different stages, he has his own screen, his own uh, the, that uh, uh, perception in that, that level of consciousness. When it you observe something, uh, it creates a feeling, definitely a, a human feeling. And at the first instance, you get the true feeling that whether it is like it or it is not to be like. Later on, certain other factors may come as we find that, uh, you know, that, that is the corrupt part of it. Uh, that, okay, you try to justify, you try to do this thing, maybe for self-interest, other things. That's why, why I am trying to emphasize that primitiveness, that clarity, that purity of perception, that purity of feeling, uh, that yes, it is. It is. To, it is approval. This is approval. This should get the uh, approval. This should not get. Uh, this should sustain. That should not sustain. Uh, this must be accepted as the norm. That should not be accepted. So uh, this this we have. To, it is good. We learn it from primitive uh, societies, from primitive human being, um, uh, so that you know you put everything in context. I believe that anything should be put in true context. If you put things in a wrong context, then definitely you will not reach to the right conclusion, right things. Uh, and, and that's why the most interesting thing uh, to understand anything is to know its story, know its growth, know its development, know the factors which have come in the way in its growth, in its development. Uh, and that's how the story of law can be best understood. Uh, and it should not be like something, uh, you know, uh, as uh, a jet is, uh, you know, aeroplane is coming with uh, some kind of explosive substance and throwing it somewhere. The law cannot be like that. And it can't be, you know, um, taken and understood in that, you know. Uh, it, it can be understood in that context. So all these books of law, have not come and they have been thrown upon us. Uh, that's not the case. Uh, and, and that's, uh, I, I may talk of even uh, the, 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 the Gita, the Quran, uh, they, they have also been, you know, uh, in, a, in a context. Uh, they have been told and revealed in a context. And every uh, version of things there, that must be understood in a context. Uh, that uh, what what is the what was the society and what it could be its meaning in that kind of society this society that's why we interpret it and interpretation should also be with that clarity of uh, mind and that feeling uh, that when uh, when it was revealed the, the the those who reveal it the divinity the god or deity or anybody then they have they are doing it with purity. And what is that purity? That purity is the same thing. That you are with a clear mind, you are with a clear conscience. It can be uh, to bring, uh, you know, uh, this uh, uh, some uh, some good thing, some harmony, rather than it can be a corrupt kind of uh, uh, thing that can create uh, difficulties and uh, that can not uh, really be convincing for that human uh, thought and understanding. So, dear friends, when, when people started settling uh, from period to period, this uh, kind of theorization, as I'm giving you, that will go always with it. Uh, and, uh, and then second thing which I would say, that human being uh, in any state has always felt that he should feel sa safe and his, uh, that's the issue of safety, security. Uh, then uh, he would always like uh, that he is, just in a just uh, and and that can have 
Yeah, it's its own connotation, its own input in different periods of history. So when human beings settled in his primitive settlements, those were self-regulatory societies and the law was generally present in that liked behavior, that approvable behavior, which was approved by everybody in those societies. And definitely there might have been their heads their you know seniors or their otherwise in their organization They're the people who were trusted and believed our advisors they were helping those societies in maintaining uh, uh, cooperation solidarity peace uh, and and that's law how law has existed and the societies have perpetuated and exist and continued um, for long and then uh, we can say from that when when we came to tribal kind of settlements uh, in those tribal settlements, uh, you can see uh, that uh, there was uh, a more kind of regular regulate uh, this uh, uh, regulation uh, and brought into uh, the system of behavior governance uh, and at the same time understanding uh, and then consciousness. Uh, so uh, so they they started formal cooperative activities which we may say formal socially approvable activities and then societies got structuring in a better way so all that had some kind of law behind it uh, some kind of regulation behind it and the spirit behind that was the same that all should survive the society should be a just society it should be a fair society because there are disputes with respect to um, this uh, uh, property, with respect to uh, this, uh, uh, you know, uh, any other kinds of positions. Till then, uh, we, we, we didn't have probably the formal system of money was not till then a property and might be there would have been for uh, some other kinds of things for friendship for other things. There might have been when greed came, when other human instincts, uh, you know, they started operating, uh, then definitely there might uh, have been more conflicts. But primarily property uh, was the, as we say, that was the serpent, which was first born, which became the main reason of conflicts. When everybody shared everything, uh, then at that time there were minimum kinds of conflicts. But when mine and thine started and then we needed more a formal kind of system uh, and that's how uh, the law in those tribal societies can be understood uh, that what possibly could be the conflicts uh, and uh, what possibly could be the solutions. Uh, and today also, if you will uh, look back uh, to th that all history, if you take an interesting uh, uh, kind of uh, uh, example uh, that how disputes, uh, many disputes were conflicts were with respect to women in, in those societies, uh, that how they would determine uh, this, uh, the status of marriage, uh, the choice for marriage, uh, then, uh, you know, uh, other uh, kinds of benefits to be given. Uh, so we, we found in those societies they had very novel kinds of things. Some, sometimes a marriage was determined on the basis of the might of the person. And somewhere uh, many things as we know that rule of primogeniture. If, if somebody had uh, uh, two sons, three sons, then the property would go to the elder son. Uh, that's the rule of primogeniture. Uh, and then uh, uh, very, very kinds of, uh, today you will feel these are very funny and uh, but these were existing there, what were, whatever were the reasons. Uh, and how much was the right of uh, uh, this younger brother on the property? What could be the uses and had only the maintenance rights? And even today we find up to this date, these things have continued in many societies. Uh, you will be still finding the traces of it. As we generally say that the, uh, about uh, uh, certain colonizers, the, the reptile has gone, but the tail is still there. Uh, so uh, we, we find it, yes, yes, yes these kinds of uh, things have existed, and, uh, but 
uh, but they uh, this uh, waves of time the uh, they they have uh, and currents of times they have kept them changing and and things kept changing the laws about property regulation laws about family uh, and and more so there was uh, uh, about status uh, focus was on status uh, that somebody was the head of uh, the tribe he had tremendous powers as as the head of the tribe somebody was the head of the family his his uh, powers were you know i i i believe without any limit uh, he could do anything uh, and then somebody was a daughter then she had to bear the things uh, as as a daughter and somebody was a wife then she had uh, her that kind of limitation on her privileges uh, and then somebody was a husband uh, maybe whatever the quality he would enjoy the status of being a husband and and probably not only the husband but he was the master of everything whether all living and non living things uh, he he could be and 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 that's how we we have found uh, the institution of slavery uh, that that was very much prominent uh, in the in the world and it's through these uh, kinds of uh, you know stages of development uh, we have found how how humanity has passed uh, and and then all that feudal system then you know uh, right from small small agricultural holdings when some powerful people even when the, the the marriage was to be determined by power not to speak of the land so many would have the larger ones and he would himself become the lord and others would become the tenants and that also the rights were to be determined by the lord himself to his convenience uh, and 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 that say you no know, there is a long history on that and uh, if i mention another thing that even uh, when there was a movement from tribal to kingships then kings you know claimed something different uh, they claimed uh, in most of the places uh, that they are vested with something from uh, unseen god uh, and then probably the impression was given he is a reflection of god uh, and uh, and yeah, the, the humanity has passed by that stage Uh, of uh, this development of law as well uh, and and humanity had to suffer so when when i was saying uh, earlier primitive is most modern primitive means then human being was free to determine that this is worth to be appreciated worth to be followed it is fair it gives us pleasure and then uh, uh, they would decide the things in that primitive society like that but when there was a tribal head or a king then definitely it all that is uh, devoid of it then it would be the pleasure of the king it would be the choice of the king convenience of the king convenience of the tribal head uh, you know uh, uh, is it you know so we sh- we should not take primitive is always something which is not acceptable or which is underdeveloped which is not well thought no 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 uh, you know uh, that he was with with good kind of clarity he was thinking liberally freely and with equality i think if we have to find out any best of the societies and with best of the norms then we should look to that how they might have been doing the things let us think for a moment if a shipwreck takes place and then 1 2 uh, 3 4 5 persons they get to an island unknown island and start a new life there you can see how they will experience it there will not be any kind of he is a superior he is an inferior he is having this status he is having that. they will equally you know get to the task and and they will establish their own you know voluntary uh, this procedures uh, of doing the things and doing the work uh, and and they will establish something with with that um, uh, pristine purity uh, that and and the behavior will be quite different that way so um, yeah, through these uh, stages of uh, you know tribal and all that and at the same time uh, you can see the levels even if it is the tribal period the level is at the law at home the law in the tribe and then law with respect to the intertribal relationships uh, that that's how you can see the dimensions of it uh no it's not uh, merely taking it that this was probably all simple no 
because human being had to regulate the things at home in the vicinity or in the tribe itself and then beyond uh, that how the relationships with other tribes you can you can see how uh, you know uh, the, these uh, things were happening in a good way, uh, but at the same time, uh, we uh, we find that uh, complexities are there. And and today, if anybody really wants to have a good understanding of law, he must have all these perceptions. He he must think of it uh, that uh, that that how they were doing the things then at home. Uh, what could be the privileges of the, of of the child, a girl child, a male child? Uh, mother, uh, then uh, father, then grandfather, grandmother, grandchild. Uh, what sort of relationship, you know? And today we find, uh, you know, it's uh, it's uh, relationship is the same, uh, but human being has because of his own uh, complexes created complexity in it, uh, and and that's why we are studying this evolution to look back to it. Uh, that that what was the situation and what might have been the situation. And then definitely to retain the property, possess the property, carry on some kind of business trade, maybe by barter, by other things, whatever uh, that itself, you know, had the rules. And in the absence of a formal legislature and in the absence of uh, formal enforcement agencies, um, these things have worked. They were working and they continued uh, to uh, make the humanity survive uh, to get into another stage and have the transformations uh, like that. Uh, so, uh, and that's how the tribal relationships, even criminal laws uh, were uh, in those societies and, uh, and in the absence of uh, uh, the complexities with which we think today, uh, I think they had uh, the primary responses, human responses, as I, I was telling you. That, the primary response probably they were following, and that's how you know uh, we find uh, uh, in in various societies uh, they would uh, not go more about the uh, investigation. They would not more go about uh, than uh, looking for other kinds of uh, procedures to be followed in the uh, in in the resolving of a dispute, or then in in case of offense and crime in terms of punishing. They would straightway, anybody would voice a concern. No, an offender should be punished. Uh, and that can be the, um, the, the reason which, which, which is behind uh, those kinds of uh, punishments which were earlier being given as a retributory kind of punishment. Uh, and, uh, and then uh, uh, other theories, there was not, one could have hardly thought of a reformation. Uh, that might not happen, and 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 that's how one can visualize how property laws must have developed, laws of succession, uh, how they must have developed, who should have the share in the property, and how much, and when. Uh, that's a very important aspect of uh, this development of laws and evolution of laws in human societies. Uh, so, uh, dear friends, uh, then we. Uh, probably I will try to give that kind of context to things and then intertribal that uh, that they had the norms of uh, relationships uh, as as you know conflict is natural without there we cannot imagine a society or societies without conflict uh, and that's uh, when today we study the humanitarian law uh, as you find today the war is going on or it's an imposed war or whatever. Uh, Russia and Ukraine. Uh, we we have uh, the modern uh, humanitarian law, uh, uh, but even then, if you will find uh, uh, in earlier days, uh, even uh, in India, in ancient history, we can think there were uh, the norms to be followed uh, for war when when one tribe would fight another one or one society, one community, others. They had to follow certain norms. Uh, so it's not anything new that has uh, abruptly come into existence and uh, and you got it. No, everything has gradually come up and uh, that's what I'm saying in those tribal periods. Um, there have been uh, laws at the family level, at the, uh, uh, at the 
societies uh, level and then also uh, when the tribes tell that if one tribe is doing this thing, how they so, uh, dear friends, uh, having said that, and then I, I would say, as I, as I already said, that as uh, you know, uh, when people believe much, you know, in the unseen, uh, so even when, when formally, when kingdoms uh, had come into existence, uh, then uh, you know, a maharaja or a badsha or a king or whatever you may call them. Uh, so that that was a state where uh, there was uh, a centralization uh, was uh, growing uh, uh, at at a higher level and uh, and that's how you know formal kinds of uh, law making uh, started uh, and along with that uh, we we find uh, that uh, in, throughout the world uh, that period of history when uh, we had all these uh, uh, kinds of kingdoms and rajwads and others. Uh, we have reality. That religion has been also uh, that side growing and uh, and people were following uh, those religious norms as well as. Uh, the norms uh, which were developing in the society and which were being uh, pronounced by by their heads of the states of that uh, those times uh, and 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 you can you can mark the differences uh, in the content and in the in the scope and in the width of, of uh, in the dimensions of the laws then and then and later uh, so, uh, dear friends, when then came the concept of a state, uh, and and you find that a state and organization was brought into existence, and that uh, state uh, was defined by scholars, but it has existed, uh, and uh, and and there you found uh, that uh, that they uh, that people wanted to live together earlier. Uh, they were doing the things as per their consciousness. These must exist. I shall say not. They were deliberately and otherwise trying to bring an institution into existence, but it was as a human process, as a desire to survive, a desire to have convenient things. The things were developing, but later on they took to it deliberately that we should have this kind of thing into existence and how to bring it. We should have this kind of society in the existence and that's how that desire to survive has probably made people conscious and uh, and more and more conscious about something which made possible the social contract as we may say and that developed into the concept of the state and that state is all what was going, uh, you know, non formally uh, or informally uh, or uh, uh, otherwise. Uh, now the focus became the most important uh, human organization uh, that was the state and state became the most powerful uh, instrument and vehicle. Uh, for regulating the human affairs. Uh, that became most powerful uh, to uh, develop uh, the humanity further. Uh, that became the most powerful to bring uh, anything good to the society. And that became the most powerful, which was visible everywhere. And that's how every, everybody uh, would, uh, in, in a formal state, think of the state, functions of the state and other things. Uh, and, and that's how uh, when it was uh, stated uh, that when there is a territory, when there are people, when there is sovereign in existence, the government itself, uh, you know, is the territory apparel which makes the state uh, survive, sustain, uh, function uh, and and in that also uh, when we look from Montesquieu's perspective, 
Then he talked of the separation of the powers uh, based on, uh, on the concept that, uh, abs that power corrupts and absolute power corrupts absolutely as was uh, done and defined uh, by, by thinkers later. Uh, so the question was, uh, as in his case, that, uh, that if, if somebody is the same person is making the law and same person is executing the law, and same person is the judge and uh, determining its fairness, uh, then actually uh, there will be uh, what uh, we say that absolute power corrupts. Absolutely. There will. The purpose of the law is to bring harmony. The purpose of the law is to bring peace and develop, promote the satisfaction of the people, which is definitely uh, to be evaluated and found that it is in conformity with the satisfactory values which uh, human being or humanity is carrying with it. And once we don't have that kind of satisfaction, <coughs> we don't find peace in the society. We don't find contentment. Uh, and that's how we find conflicts come up uh, because of that. Uh, so uh, that, that then came this separation of powers became uh, a very important uh, kind of determining uh, factor uh, for uh, for various kinds of activities. Most important of it, the making of the law, the development of the law, framing of the law, formulation of the law, and then to find the techniques for its uh, implementation, and then also to devise the techniques for its enforcement and also devise the techniques for its further development to different processes of reformation. Uh, that's how uh, we came to that stage of it. Uh, and uh, I may here say one more thing, uh, that at that time, people uh, were talking in talk of separation of powers. A separation of powers, uh, I, I think there should have been separation of uh, function and substance. Uh, the separation of powers, but people were and are uh, obsessed with power. That if somebody happens to be the head of the state, uh, an institution is, uh, you know, the central in uh, its uh, uh, this position, and then definitely people looked at it in terms of power, and they themselves also see it. Uh, but I believe it should have been uh, that that this is a function to be performed. Yes, not without powers. Separate rather than a power to have the show the uh, that's uh, but those days to this day it's take truly as power to show the power. Uh, it's not the power to perform the function. Uh, and that uh, led to the better, you know, uh, those regimes. We do have development, but they are by conflict. Conflict also when you have equal forces, then they also result in some harmony. Uh, after you know uh, there is uh, is a conflict, but I think if uh, it's taken as power to function, then we can have uh, better systems, better regulations, uh, and better thinking also, uh, even before there is a conflict. So I have said. Uh, we are stage, an advanced stage, uh, where lawmaking is given to particular institutions. And necessary that after looking to how the primitive society was being, how they are set, uh, the people they have laws, and then how tribal periods were watching it and witnessing it, and how later on. Rajivas and Kajan and others, it and then how came to the state. Uh, there we find then safety then in the in the uh, uh, and function of the making laws and, and uh, implementing them, uh, and then if necessary, reform. Uh, Okay, we are in.
better it will be that we briefly to uh, to things which happen in Europe, and uh, then in in India we will see in a way. I would say uh, that the right in this all process in the last few uh, for five hundred years, science science developed. Uh, and the, the sciences influenced the human behavior and the talent and uh, to exploit the resources uh, and and that way what result uh, we call it industrial revolution and at the same time we find we, what we call as renaissance and enlightenment uh, and when when that thing happened, uh, we found uh, itself uh, developed, but at the same time we found uh, that people once they got more uh, power uh, and uh, and and industrialization naturally would not have been possible if we would not have uh, powerful industrial houses, uh, large scale production. Uh, and and it is uh, it is that kind of uh, uh, necessity that we found part partnerships as you find if you take the business sector how partnerships came into existence when we had the capacity to have large scale production it needed more investment and that's how many people joined hands to have more money and uh, they invested and had larger production and that's how we can say if a if a student of corporate law wants to understand this scenario, it has developed from these kinds of things. And you find it that yes, to have large scale production and then have their marketing. Other things needs more money. It could not be done by one person and therefore a partnership firm become at the same time. You know, uh, why then corporations? Naturally, the answer lies in it itself. If a partnership would uh, this uh, would fail, then definitely then all those creditors would come and they were making each partner liable. And each partner was liable up to his skin. His home property would go, his personal property would go because uh, that he had done it. He was a partner and therefore to facilitate the making of the business at the larger scale. Uh, these partnership firms were further developed. They evolved into the corporations where the concept of limited liability came. Uh, that, okay, even if a partnership is failing, but a partner will be liable only up to the extent he had the share in that business. And that's how it was given the name of them uh, in corporation and and that became a corporation, became an entity different from the people who had brought that into existence or who are otherwise taking the benefits out of it. Uh, so you see how things uh, develop with time. Uh, when, when, when whole uh, structure of business and course of business changed, it gave a different kind of institutionalization and different kinds of norms. So a norm came into existence, we call it limited liability. And if limited liability would not come, then the process of further industrialization and then the process of all these commercial activities being done at a larger scale would have become a difficult task. And in the same way, we can find that when there is large scale industrialization and emancipation, can you say that the state structure will remain unaffected and not only state structure, but your home will remain unaffected? Is it possible? No, it affects and that's how we found that democracy started developing when we had this kind of thing. And we found that industrial laws started coming into existence and we found that family laws started changing. And even if, if you find, uh, you know, as regards uh, these property rights of women, uh, you can see when this uh, uh, this industrialization had taken place uh, till then. Uh, it were the men who were supposed to work outside the home and women were in the drudgery of the house. Uh, and uh, but uh, today we say that women were emancipated by men. It's not a truth. What is actually the evolutionary analysis of it? Uh, that is uh, that when 
uh, big industrial houses were there uh, they were not they were uh, after have, having more profits and how could more profits come they could come by giving less wages and when could they give less wages when they will have more and more labor available and how could more and more labor be available then women children anybody should work and uh, and that's how you know by for the purpose of increasing the labor force uh, we find uh, that uh, the people came out and they were persuaded to work and when women said we why should we work because we are not the owners but then was passed in england itself the women's property act of 1882 you can look to it uh, that uh, that gave property rights to women uh, and 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 that persuaded the women to come out out of their homes and and they started working in offices in factories uh, in markets and and today the situation is that every task is done by women so so this is see how how things come out and maybe in a street of london if somebody is a is a, is, a, is an old fashioned indian and then he looks for a barber a male barber in a street it will be very difficult for him to find out yeah because this society has evolved and everybody is doing the work you have medical you have women doctors you have nurses you are having a big force now in defenses uh that's uh, that's how you know things uh, change uh with time and even if you look to this corporate uh, thing more you can find in this uh, you know uh, part of the world it was a company which became so powerful and uh, and our country was overtaken by that country, that that company uh how, how things you know changed uh, and that's how you are talking of east india company and i don't know for the last so many years i am thinking of making a west england company but we are not succeeding in the, that to to overtake the west through a company it's uh, when that evolution will take place so so somewhere somebody has to think in those terms to equate uh, these to have the you know balanced kinds of developments balanced kinds of uh, this uh, norms to grow Uh, uh you have to develop the things uh, otherwise also there is no fun that you remain lost in that those all those traditional kinds of things and then uh, not give the women the space to work uh, or uh, then uh, to, to participate in uh, uh, various kinds of activities no uh, now it has it has evolved to, to this level has come across uh, to this level and that's how the terms of governance uh as functions of the king were limited least to bother about welfare might be there was some welfare minded king somewhere they were taking but otherwise that was not the primary duty of it probably it was the duty of the people to serve the king rather than uh, uh, this king uh, taking more care of it but when the state came into existence the primary function of the state must be to look to the people and that's how uh we are now moving aside from the concept of pure administration to governance because we have to regulate we have to look to the things must happen in a better way uh, and then all uh, when money became property the institution of bank became necessary uh so uh, if 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 money would not have become property then bank would uh, not have come into existence and then how the banking system is developing and changing with time you can see that also uh and and then uh, you can find and how the administrator uh, uh, has has been in earlier days and how uh, through different changes in the society understanding uh, and as we call awareness and then assertiveness how you find uh, that how administration is also trying to accommodate and adjust itself with the needs of the people needs of the society uh, and and then uh, for uh, motivations uh, that how people will work and like that uh, and and uh, i i must say uh, that uh, there there is uh, the area uh, of uh, this uh, legislation uh, then when i talk about this thing that thing that thing when we get to the uh, this period then i think we should never uh, you know ignore uh, 
uh, that the legislation uh, is now happening through legislature. When Jeremy Bentham was giving his theory of legislation, we should uh, remember it. Uh, and that's how he is called as father of modern legislation. Uh, and uh, he wrote his theory of legislation. And there, um, uh, you know, uh, we, we see that the society needs lawmaking every day uh, and uh, at least evaluation of law every day. Uh, because, you know, it, it affects uh, the human heart, human mind uh, and, and his, uh, his, his uh, you know, uh, wishes, his desire. Uh, and there, are, there is need for promotion. There is a need for restriction as well. In earlier days, laws were taken only as rested to majors, but now we, it's a developmental vehicle. Uh, this is a tool of change also. We sometimes we want to change a situation. We make a law for that. Uh, so, uh, so that's how, you know, concepts uh, keep changing from time to time. And there also, uh, when now the task is with formal institutions, somewhere with a jirga, somewhere with a congress, somewhere with a parliament, somewhere with the Vidhan Sabha, somewhere with uh, a body making bylaws somewhere and, and this thing and that thing. And in societies, welfare societies, they also have that kind of thing. So in all this process developed also something uh, uh, which we say that state is becoming most powerful. Then the functionaries of the state may become despotic and cruel. So we need constitutionalism. So we need human rights. So we need something which should stop them somewhere. Your power is this much. You, you, you are very powerful and I'm submitting it. Uh, but at the same time, this is your limit. That's how, you know, uh, different any law can be understood in its context, how things come up, how they grow, how they uh, get to it. I'll not get more into that then because I may then miss the, the most important of it. Uh, that's uh, I, I want to go to the first India's first war of independence because let me see how things have uh, happened uh, here, uh, you know, before I close. Uh, so when uh, Indians were un under that company, so company is not having a heart. Company is having only a desire for profits and more profits and more control. And that's how you probably that must have prompted our, uh, you know, uh, the, 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 that generation of, of the people. Otherwise, Indians are very kind people. They tolerate even rulers. So they, they might have come up uh, with that intensity and they did shake uh, the crown of England there. And they used too much of the force to subjugate, to suppress the first war of independence in India. But that had an impact. It had an impact. They felt that these Indians can someday overthrow them. And therefore, it is better to give them some kind of partnership in lawmaking. And that's how you can see that after 1857, they started convincing people that we will give you representation in central legislature. Uh, whether it is a, a, that Constitutional Act of 1860 or 61, you can find it. They did never implement that. That's another thing. But they did write it. So my question is how, you know, uh, we change, you know, we how laws, these concepts come up in the society. So the root of uh, self-rule, self-regulation, uh, self-participation in lawmaking uh, has uh, come to the people of India because of their very strong resentment through uh, their uh, uprise in 1857. And, and they, they created a space there in the minds of the rulers that we should be the partners in lawmaking. But at the same time, uh, as in 1830s, the first law commission was established. Uh, and then I think its work was uh, made more brisk and vigorous. And that's how we started in uh, in just after 1857, other laws coming up, legislations coming up, and most of the legislations came in during that period. Till then, we find something like regulatory, regulating act, other things, and maybe uh, some more kinds of uh, things, but mostly the formal legislation, and we find the Indian Penal Code coming there, and we find then that in that period, contract law is coming, 1872, and then 
Gods and Guardians uh, Ward Act, then uh, uh, Ev Evidence Act, and then certain uh, small codes about criminal procedure codes. You can uh, see the list and then the system of codes uh, that uh, that how to engage the people with the system of justice. Uh, because it's not merely the question of having the law, uh, but then people should be engaged and justice uh, is, was made more a process of a sophisticated one where people shall get engaged with it and the, they, they need a different kinds of laws uh, for that purpose. Otherwise, in earlier societies, nobody was telling generally a lie. So nobody would tell a lie because he will be killed. If he would be asked, did you kill this man? He would say yes. OK, then you will be hanged. OK, he was hanged. <laughs> this was probably earlier the situation, but throwing everything through evidence with technicalities, with this thing, that's what code system and procedures uh, we, we are having. Uh, and then, uh, you know, and, and many of the Indians, they uh, they did not stop fighting for independence with uh, this, uh, with, with the cessation of 1857 upsurge. Uh, that's why we found a large number of prisons, then prison norms, uh, and 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 how to you know uh, deal with them and and all that uh, uh, those kinds of establishment a new kind of regime uh, was came into existence uh, but at the same time uh, the 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 desire in the people of the heart in the in the hearts of the people of India that kept on growing that we should be our own rulers and and therefore some of the people who studied in certain uh, institutions beyond this territory in England elsewhere, uh, they understood it more. What the law should be, what the liberty is, what equality is, what social justice is, what women's rights are, and then how we should have fairness. All these concepts started uh, making place in the minds of the people of the country. Uh, and then that's how you found that various constitutional acts came into existence uh, and and then all the kinds of slogans and then uh, different kinds of uh, people's groups fighting for independence with with their own uh, these agendas you will find them full with it the same thing which is a motivation for making a law was the motivation for starting a movement against the colonial rulers can find that and ultimately those very things which were in the uh, minds of the people and who, which was a support an ideological support for those people uh, to carry forward the independence movement they then converted into the legislation if they had the desire for liberty equality uh, you know gender justice other things the same you know that got into the legislature this is how you know uh, one should understand the spirit of the law, the process that how it is, you know, how coincidental and then how it is going ahead together. Yeah, and, and then uh, definitely we reach it to our, uh, the day when we had the independence uh, and uh, uh, we, we had then to uh, get to uh, that, that position uh, that on, at, at the stroke of, uh, that at the midnight stroke of the clock on 15th of August 1947, then India woke up and got its sovereignty. It had the government, it had the people, it had the territory. It was not having the sovereignty. And that sovereignty came, therefore power to make the law came, power to implement the law came, power to enforce the law came. And how good we are going with it, I think we should have the primitive man always in mind that we should have that test. This is fair. This is unfair. And this India is a great mother because we are not in scarcity. We are not poor. We have rich resources. I think we should never have anything like greed, anything like other things which can take away a person from fear thinking, fear understanding fall anything no indian can fall because the mother is very rich its lap is very strong so we should make fair laws we should fairly implement them and then instead of power of montesquieu we should think of functions of the uh, you know organs of the state functions of particular person 
that will carry the power with it. When we say you do this thing, that means you have the power. If we say you have the power to do it, I I am not. This may, may be taken as my personal opinion, but I believe that the one does generally the same thing with the same kind of inclination and intensity as he thinks about it. If an officer thinks this is my duty, then definitely he will walk barefooted and do it. If he knows that this is my power, then he may order his cleric to do it, or he may have a different kind of posture and other things. So that's where I come of the Constitution of India that when we talk of uh, that to doing justice, giving equality, giving freedom of conscience, or respecting dignity and integrity, this is function of everybody because we have given this Constitution and that's how this is our function. If other things are, are otherwise there. I think I should stop here and uh, uh, now uh, we may have certain questions from dear students. Uh, God bless you all. Thank you so much. Especially I am thankful to and more to Yadav Prasad because you know he is very uh, vibrant and he has he is bringing big changes. And so consolidating and all other factors. And please. Question. Thank you so much, sir. It was an extremely a valuable session. Now, sir, I may have your permission to take up a few questions. Sir? Yeah, yeah. Okay, sir. So let me ask students. It seems due to some connectivity issues, I'll take up the questions. So first in hand is, so how do we identify that what actions will considered as law in the primitive times? So, so am I audible? Yes, you are. You are audible. Uh, so it seems mm -hmm. like. On one user side. Network quality. So it's, I think there is a glitch, sir. Hanji, Hanji. You please, will you please repeat the question? Uh, yes, sure. Sure, sure, sir. So my question is, okay. how do we identify yeah. that? Yeah. Uh -huh. Yes, yes. How do we identify that what actions will be considered as law in the primitive times? Yeah, as I said, yeah, you were to have the self-regulation. It was not another person to tell you. Uh, and, and that's how, that's why I'm giving more stress to the human nature and consciousness. Uh, and and I think the Bentham's uh, test is uh, very much uh, you know applicable universally, uh, whether something brings pain or pleasure. So if it brings uh, pleasure, you approve it. If it brings pain somewhere, then uh, you feel nah, it should go. It should go for reformation. Uh, that has been universally so. Uh, that's how he has given in his theory of legislation. Uh, and and then uh, it's not that simple also, but might be that will need uh, a, a lecture for that uh, about that. But but this time I think this. Yes, Which or I think we should have now some uh, uh, observations of uh, especially others and maybe some faculty member uh, because uh, students uh, may not be able to. Uh, so one, have more, one more question from the students that I just like to extend. 
so can international law can be considered as law because they don't have binding effects so can international law can be considered as law okay uh, see uh, this uh, this is something uh, it depends on perspective if we look to it from austenian perspective who wants a sovereign there uh, and then uh, if you don't follow it there will be um, uh, sanctions should be there so so that way um, we say uh, uh, austen's concept of law is the vanishing uh, international law is the vanishing point of austen's jurisprudence because we won't be able to find there the sovereign and the, the Uh, from the days uh, we established United Nations, uh, it's trying to consolidate to some extent, not uh, as we have the Security Council and we have still power. Uh, and therefore, in uh, certain cases, we are not able to implement the, the thing. But at the same time, we find international law is growing too much. Uh, we find that there is too much. Uh, Laws of business, international business, uh, then uh, socialization. You know, we we you have uh, uh, like UNICEF. You have uh, you have the organization like uh, WIPO, uh, and then uh, you know that that's uh, in a big way advancing. Uh, but it is the students are really correct also at the same time. Uh, that still we don't find. Uh, that this uh, from the Austenian sense, it is a law, but uh, from uh, from other perspectives that when a law grows uh, and and uh, that way, the international law is growing and then there is a public opinion. For example, in today's uh, Ukraine, uh, what is uh, restricting uh, USSR from using uh, every kind of force? What it is the public opinion? Yeah, so we have developed humanitarian law. Uh, we have developed certain norms for, uh, from the point of view of human rights. There are uh, uh, UN agencies for advancement of human rights. So even uh, Russia and other fighting forces, they, are, they keep on thinking uh, that their level will go down. Uh, and anyone tell us you have violated this norm, you have violated that norm. But at the same time, yes, we have not got to that. And um, UN Security Council can ask them. At the same time, they may veto it. Uh, but up to this extent, they have to face some kind of uh, questioning that whether you are going wrong or right. And they are also justifying whatever they do. Uh, and, and why do they need to just because there is a law? Because there is international law, there are international norms. Otherwise, they would say this is our might and we'll do it. Yes. So that's how, yes, uh, yeah, we are correct. International law is not yet at that level, but it has largely come forward to regulate the relations between the states. And ICJ is not still to dictate the law as our Supreme Court does. Uh, so that level is also clear. They only give the opinion, uh, but uh, the, the law in the hearts of the people, if ICJ will say, Ukraine is justified. All the people of the world say there has been a violation of the law. That's how we have to go with it. So, seeing that is one more question in the chat box. So, how far back we need to go to trace the origin of law and keeping in mind the new upcoming uniform civil code? What do you think? How it will proceed in coming times? Yeah, very good. Uh, see, uh, it's again, uh, you know, uh, why why we need to go to uh, into difficulties. The thing is that we have to allow the human mind to think freely and to work freely, and uh, we have not have any kinds of cautions. We have not to give any kind of directions. I think human being, when left to work, automatically that brings more reformation rather than when you tell to somebody you do like this. Uh, so the question is we have to go for more and more uh, kinds of understanding of things uh, and uh, provide more opportunities 
Uh, as for example, if you go to the world, uh, if you go to India of uh, 1930, uh, then 40, 50, 60, uh, and today we find if, if uh, uniform civil code is in favor of women, many women speak for it themselves. They won't go opt for it. Uh, and I think uh, by this kind of uh, free, allowing some free approach to any kind of thing, uh, we can have it and we have already had it a lot uh, in the sense, for example, if we say uh, before 1956, uh, there was not uh, anything for um, getting the dissolution of marriage uh, under Hindu law, but that came. And at the same time, the same grounds are in the Muslim law. I think that's the uniform. No? And when we have, when a judge has to explain cruelty, if a Muslim woman goes to the court that there is cruelty, so decide, uh, give me the right to separate. And a Hindu woman or a Christian woman goes, that, you know, cruelty is the same. The person is the same. A judge has, to say, has not to say whether the woman is a Muslim or a Hindu or a Christian. The judge has to say cruelty. He has to see cruelty. So once he sees cruelty is done, he must give relief to the woman. Uh, that's how uniformity, you know, uh, will be uh, that that will quickly grow. Uh, and any law which he which the judge finds uh, that it is coercive, uh, it's restrictive, uh, and it is against uh, one's uh, you know uh, this uh, uh, dignity, uh, then they must. Definitely declare it. It's it's uh, in its right of our constitution. Uh, that's how we can have, have a better process of it uh, without uh, saying that I shall impose the code or I will do it. And this thing, I think uh, that's then it does not remain uniform. It then remains a kind of political action. Uh, that's how you know we find. I think there is already lot achieved. You go and read any number of cases uh, from. Uh, uh, Christians, from Muslims, from uh, Hindus, from Sikhs, from others, you will find almost the, the judgments are with clarity. As about uh, this custody of children, uh, the norm is court sees that the benefit of the child. It is already there. And now adoption, earlier there was some dispute about adoption. Under the Juvenile Justice Act, now we have a provision about adoption. And, uh, and, and, And and that's how uniformity, I believe, is going. Like we are having more transfer, more education, uniformity themselves. That's how it goes. Okay. Thank you. Ah, uh, Parulam, can you hear me? Yes. Yes, sir. Uh, so let us sum up it. We have already crossed the time. We have very less time. Yes. So uh, please sum up it, and you may take one last question only. Which sir? Okay. Okay. Seems like there are no more questions. So we thank you so much, sir, for your precious time. Now I would welcome our actually, sir, Mr. Vijay Kumar Yadav, sir, to extend a vote of thanks. Our respected and honorable guest of the day, uh, Professor Bani sir, and my dear, you know, team members and my dear resident, we have been eagerly waiting for the days to hear the Bani sir for last four five days. And personally, all my resident and faculty members, and Bani sir was you know, familiar with this institution for a very long time. So, sir has explained so many things so beautifully, I am not getting word to describe it. Sir has described how in ancient times the customary laws are emerging and how these laws are changing day by day and what is now their real face which we, which we are adopting in our society. You know, East India Company has played a very vital role, as Vanisar has explained to everyone. So really, we are all grateful to Vanisar that he has a, you know, uh, 
he is a ship of knowledge you can say so he is having you know knowledge from each and every corner like that so uh, my dear friend uh, in the time of you know east india company it was very difficult to make any laws you all know that lord macleod just started new education policy and they introduced english uh, language as a medium of education and both hindu and muslim protested it on very large level that we are not going to uh, study english language and so many things are there in ancient time there was a rule for the school that the especially hindu you know uh, community that the people of lower caste i mean from sudra they are not i uh, entitled to get admission in the school slowly and slowly this system was changed and then it was told that okay they will get that mission that they will sit outside of the class later on it was already made very strict rule for that and everybody has this right to get the education and nowadays all are equal in the classroom and they are enjoying all this everybody knows that the french revolution was the first pillar of all this side where we have got liberty equality and fraternity first time in the world this is very very important if you see in the you know ancient time you will find there was only hammurabi code of law hammurabi was the king who had a curb on the rule on the pillar for rules kya the the i for i it for the so the you know the main object object of the law is not to finish the person to but to bring some reform inside the society otherwise so if this this types of rule will continue in the society so there will be one day when there will be no people alive in the society like that so as bhavishar has said it is the supreme requirement of the law that there should be a regular monitoring of the law there must be some changes we are getting amendment in you know which various act recently we have seen uh, juvenile justice amendment act human rights uh, act is also amended so so many things are being amended slowly and slowly it's very good so this is the beauty of the judiciary system to just rectify the old laws which is not operative in this time and at the same time the new clauses are also required to add in the law everybody knows that this corona period has made a vast change in the society and it has changed the life of the human being as well as it changed the arena of law also so bani sir has said very rightly that we should keep stick monitoring on the law and there should be regular change on that so once again i would like to thank sir and i would like to thank parul ma'am and then gupti valwaj and all other students and my team members those who have joined the webinar and they have listened bani sir right from you know beginning to okay so once again sir uh, thank you very much and we will be hoping you that we will have a great association with you for in coming session thank you very much thank to you. all of you sir. thank you thank i thank you, our honorable guest ma'am zalwani once again for sharing his precious time thank you sir and all who are present here have a nice day sir stay safe thank you